Welcome back to the MMA Report Live right here on RadioInfluence.com. Joining us now is a man that is going to be returning to the cage here on September the 19th at Titan Fighting Championships 35. It is Alex Soto. He's going to be taking on the undefeated Ricky Simon on the fight card. Coming from Ridgefield, Washington at the Clark County Fair Oaks Event Center. Of course, this event can be watched live on UFC Fight Pass. Alex, appreciate the time. Obviously, people are saying, Alex Soto, remember that name, remember that name. You, you spent some time in the UFC. Uh, you're coming off a win outside the UFC, but it is, it's going to be over a year by the time you step into the cage since yeah. your last fight. So what's been kind of going on with you for the last year? Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, I've been doing, going through a lot, actually, believe it or not. Uh, I've been, uh, building up an MMA team out here in, uh, in Bahrain. So I'm out, I'm actually, uh, talking to you, uh, from, uh, this little tiny country, uh, located right in the Middle East in, uh, this country in Bahrain, which is just, uh, east of, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, and, uh, it's just this beautiful country where I've kind of, uh, met some folks out here and we were building this whole new uh, MMA team. So that's what I've been kind of been doing and been really busy with uh, ever since. Yeah, I know just talking to Jose Torres the other day, he's out there as uh, coming over from the United States over there. So what, what's it for, for people like myself who live in the United States, what is it like living over there? It's, you know, it's crazy when you, um, when you first arrive, you don't know what to expect. You know, it's uh uh, Bahrain's more of a uh, very, it's, uh, I, I hate to use the term like westernized or liberal. It's, um, it's very, it's a very welcoming country. Uh, there's people from all over the world here, UK, Americans, um, a lot of Australians here, uh, local Bahrainis and people from just all over the world. They, they come down here. It's a place where they come to take vacations uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, it's, it's very liberal here and it's very welcoming to, to a lot of different types of, uh, uh, races and, you know, just cultures as that's what I was looking for. So it's a beautiful place, man. I love it. And of course, coming up here, uh, at Titan fighting championships, 35 against uh, Ricky Simon. Uh, let me just ask you this. Cause I think this is, it seems to be a, a question I, I get from a lot of fans that when they know uh, someone who used to be in the UFC is coming on the show, this is a very popular question. They always want me to ask is what is life like for a fighter when you're no longer in the UFC? Um, you know, it's, it's when you fight in the UFC, you know, you're, you're up there with the top of the, the highest level, you know, and, and I got, and I was fortunate enough to fight, you know, two bantamweights that are at the top of their game. So, um, you just kind of, you, you, you get there, um, you find out what you need to do, you, what, what you need to change, what, what needs to work, um, how, uh, how you need to train. So all those kind of that developmental phase, um, that you kind of have like this kind of this grudge, it's like, okay, all right, all right, I got this. I learned my lesson. Let's get back out there and let's do this right. So, um, so that's pretty much where where you're at uh, when when you come out of the UFC and you're working your way back up. What was the major lesson you took from those two defeats? Um, you know, the, the I think the the biggest lesson I learned is is, is believing believing in myself. So, uh, my first loss was there it was it was kind of devastating for me, and uh, so you know, I kind of lost kind of a trust in my in my abilities, you know. And, uh, and that just comes with maturity and, and with experience as well. So coming into, uh, the, uh, this fight, you know, I'm, I'm mentally prepared. Um, I'm strong. I believe in myself. I'm super confident. So that's pretty much the, the only thing that I would, that I could think is just, uh, that I brought, you know, that I uh, learned was to believe in yourself, man, and go for it. You know, this is, this is the fight game. Have you ever had this amount of confidence in your career before? I mean, even earlier nope. in your career? Nope, no, no, never. I've never had this kind of confidence before. I, like I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm bring. On, I've been with the best and the best. I mean, bring me whoever you got. I really don't care who it is that I'm fighting. Uh, I'm prepared to fight anybody or not. I'm, I'm my weight class. And of course, you're coming off that win at the Explode Fight Series. Let me just ask you quickly on that. There's a lot of negative things about the Explode Fight Series. What was yeah. it like for you fighting for them? Uh, you know what? It was. It, it, it's ex when I walked in there, I didn't know who I was going to fight. It kind of became a last minute replacement to another last minute replacement to another last minute replacement, and all I wanted to do was come back. To, to to fighting form, you know. I was like, okay, I want to. It's been a while since I fought. 
uh, okay, let's go fight in the local promotions. Let's get back in there. And uh, the way it was all, it was it was all just kind of a last minute thing. Everything just kind of happened, and I didn't even know who I was fighting until I walked inside the cage. So um, yeah, and I understand there's been a lot of like uh, uh, news about it, especially lately. I just was just funny. I was just reading an article on on what's going on over there. Uh, but you know, um, where else are you gonna fight? You know, if you're, you're a local guy from San Diego. You know, you you're you the, the commission kind of chokes the 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 state you know if you want to make a business if you want to be a promoter you need to have so much money and you know you need to go either go to the big shows or there are no small shows so it's kind of a you know one of those necessary evils that are that are in this industry i mean this 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 sport is still really young and it's got a lot of a lot of growth to do and and this you know there's there's always guys that are going to try to take advantage of of uh, that kind of stuff how much did Titan being on a platform like UFC Fight Pass play into the decision to to sign with them, or was it just simply look? I was looking for a fight and, and they offered me the best deal. Right. Yeah. It's pretty much. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Listen, um, uh, Titan FC is a it's a really good promotion. Uh, they've been around for a long time, so I know I don't have to worry about you know signing with these guys and they go bankrupt and I'll never see them again. You know. So. Um, they're a well-established promotion. Uh, I love the competition there as well. So um, it, you know they got some really talented bantamweights on on the uh, on the show. So I want to get put up against uh, the best that they got. You know, and I'm I'm prepared to take on any one of those guys. And of course, their bantamweight title right now is vacant after Brett Johns missed weight there. But uh, you know, as you take on Ricky Simon here, six and zero. He's out of mm-hmm. Vancouver. He, he fights out of a Rose City Fight Club, which is is becoming uh, one of those major teams up there in that area, especially with the Sports Lab pretty much no longer in existence. He is undefeated in his career. Four of his wins coming by TKO or KO. Uh, when you in preparations for this fight, when you look at your opponent, what do you see? Um, you know, I just I see a young fighter um, that has a lot of uh, there's, there's a lot of holes in his game. I mean, he. You know, he's a young guy, and that that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm just going to expose his, his holes, you know, or, or his weaknesses in his game. Um, but uh, on top of that, he's, 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 a, he's a really good athlete, and he's a, a, a really good wrestler. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for this guy. In terms of generally speaking, because I know you're not going to sit here and give me your game plan for the fight, but generally <laughs> speaking, I mean, what are some general keys for you to make sure that you walk away with a victory? Um, you know, it's just, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my hand raised. You know, I'm going to, I'm just going to, uh, get in there and just fight, you know, cause it's life or death, you know? So that, that's how I take each one of my fights. And, uh, that's how I'm going to approach this fight too, man. So, um, Ricky, uh, he, you know, he seems like a really good, talented fighter, like I said, and uh, and not only that, it's going to be a really good fight to watch too. I, can, I you know I'm excited to get in there with him because he's we're gonna we're gonna our styles are gonna make for a very interesting fight. Any concern at all about maybe being too anxious on fight night because you know it's gonna be your first fight in you know what 13, 14 months? Not really, honestly. I'm I'm excited for this fight. I'm excited to get back in there. Uh, I'm not nervous. Usually I'm kind of nervous at the time, but you know I'm, I'm just kind of. Um, loose and ready to ready to fight. You know, this is this is going to be a war. So, I'm um, getting my my body prepared for this. I, I guess in being over there in Byran, how do you how do do you fly over a couple of days earlier than maybe you normally would to make sure your body is is going to be ready uh, to form to perform at the time of a night you're going to be fighting at? Um, you know, I fought in Japan uh, a, a, a few fights ago, and uh, we got there about a week. A week early so we're probably going to get there same thing about seven days uh you know get the jet lag out of the way you know get the weight down and uh and just be ready to go is that something where like say a week before you're fighting before you start to travel to your fight that maybe you will start to change your training schedule to kind of get your your body used to you know when it should be expecting to perform um you know it's you're ready to perform. Uh, it, it all depends on your training, right? So uh, I'm ready to go whenever. We we train three times a day. Sometimes we go and train at night. I mean, the, Bahrain's a very unique uh, place, especially during the summertime. 
uh, because it gets so hot during the day. I mean, you, it, it, it's hot and humid out here um, that this, the, the whole city it turns into uh, the, to, alive at night. So we'll be, we'll be on the same schedule as San Diego is or, or, or the, the West Coast will be. So it, it's really not a big change. Uh, when, for me, we're going to be ready to go and ready to perform right as the bell rings. How hot are we talking during the day? Uh, you know, it's funny. It's a, uh, if you're, I think we hit 105 the other day, but that, it doesn't sound like much. But when you, <laughs> when you, when you add you know, 80% humidity or you know, 60% humidity, it, it, it feels like you're in an oven. I live in Florida, so I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we, exactly. we've had heat indexes of like 106 or so the past couple of days. It's uh, it's hot during the day. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's rough. It's really, really hot, man. You walk out just, it, it, it but it's it's a, it's hard to explain, uh, because it's a different type of hot. You walk outside and it just it hurts. It hurts to walk outside, for just to get into your car, uh, but. <laughs> But like I said, this whole place turns into like uh, night owl. So, you know, it, it, this, this city is alive at night, you know, uh, and then the weather gets really good. I've been here as well in the, in the, in the wintertime, and it's, it's a really pleasant time out here. In terms of do you sometimes maybe use that, that heat to advantage, maybe get in a run outside to kind of maybe help out with, with making, you know, getting the weight to where you want it to be? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, we, uh, two days ago, our, uh, our generator went out, so we ended up training outside in the grass, and uh, man, it was, it was a rough training session, man. Uh, the humidity, everything, we were sweating, everybody, it was, it, it was a rough warm-up, you know, <laughs> and then uh, we did the entire, we did about almost two hours outside, and let me tell you, man, it was, it was, it was a rough one. but it was a lot of fun, because, you know, you do something different, you get out of the gym, and you just change things around. Alex, I appreciate you coming on the show. I got one final question for you. What is the origin of your nickname, Extremo? Yeah, uh, I, you know my co- uh, my coach Manny. He uh, he actually gave it to me. Um, I, I think just because I'm always doing uh, some crazy stuff. Obviously, right? Um, I, I'm always into you know going on to the extreme edge on on everything that it is that I do. If it's fighting or if I, my job or. You know, and, and as well, I come from an extremo family. My brother's a professional BMX uh, stunt rider. So it's, it's, it comes with a family. Have you done anything like that, BMX riding or anything like that? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I did, uh, I did the skydiving. I did the uh, BMX. You know, oh, I, I, I did all I did the scuba diving, the free diving. You know, um, just always doing some, some crazy stuff, man. What makes you more nervous, doing that or stepping into a cage? Oh, um, man. What makes me more nervous? None of those make me really nervous, to be honest, man, because those are all just fun, you know? There's got to so, be something <laughs> that makes you nervous, though. Uh, let's see. What makes me nervous? Um, oh, God, I don't know, man. Uh, taking a test, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was never much of a, a good uh, test taker. Yeah, I can, I can, I can only imagine what that's like. I, I never in school. I never, I never liked the test. I, I could do regular. You know, you need me to do a report. Fine, man. Test. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't necessarily my thing. I wasn't yeah. a big test person. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what it is, man. I just like, I like, I've always had my eye on the outside, so I'm always outside and on some crazy adventure or something, you know. Cool. Right. We look forward to seeing your uh, Titan FC fight come up here on September the 19th against Ricky Simon. Of course, people can watch that live on ufcfightpass.com. Alex, is there anywhere on social media that my listeners can follow you at? Yeah, you guys can hit me up on uh, Twitter at, uh, at Soto MMA um, and just follow me there or you can hit me up on Facebook, whatever. I'm, on, I'm all over social media on Instagram as well.